The first step in the reincarnation of your soft drink bottle is the bale breaker. The bottles are carried on conveyors to be sorted by color and to remove non-pet containers. Next, the bottles go through the grinder station, where they are ground into flakes 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. The shredded plastic, now called dirty flake, is then thoroughly washed. Thoroughly washed and dried, the plastic is referred to as clean flake, ready to be shipped to a textile mill. One of the facilities where the clean flake is spun into fiber is a textile mill called Foss Manufacturing Company in Hampton, New Hampshire. The clean flake arrives at Foss in shipments of up to 180,000 pounds at a time, where it is pumped into huge silos that have room for a million pounds of that material. Inside the plant, the flake is washed and dried a second time, then agitated until the resin has been crystallized. The process of spinning the polyester into fiber begins with the extruder. Inside the extruder is a metal screw that forces the polyester forward. At that same time, there are heater bands around the screw that melts the resin. The resin is screened to remove any stray residue, then pushed through discs called spinnerets. As it exits through 2,600 holes, the liquid resin is then cooled inside the quench cabinet. Returning to solid form again, it is now referred to as filament. All the filament from 16 quench cabinets is gathered into a single band called a toe. We apply finish onto that toe and then deposit that toe into a can, which we call a toe can. The back and forth motion of the toe can prevents the toe from becoming tangled. On the floor above, the toe continues its journey pulled by a series of rollers. In what's referred to as the drawing process, the toe is heated and stretched to three to four times its original length, which actually increases its strength by realigning the molecules. Without drawing, the fiber is brittle. This is an example of the polyester spun toe that is not yet drawn. It fractures very easily. If I take a similar sample and stretch it out approximately three and a half to four times its original length, and try to break it, I will cut my fingers before I can fracture the fibers. After drawing, the fiber enters another set of heated rollers to heat shrink the fiber, a process called annealing, which sets the drawn fiber. It is then heated again to put a bend or crimp in the fiber, which will lock the fiber in place after being knit into fabric. The final step is cutting the product. It is pulled upstairs into the toe cutter. As the fiber is wrapped around the wheel, it is pressed against the blades, thus cutting it into the certain cut length that is required by the customer. The finished fiber, called EcoSpun, is baled and shipped to customers or used by Foss. Employing needle punch looms, Foss manufactures a variety of non-woven products from EcoSpun. Some of those applications include wall covering, automotive interior, craft felts, antimicrobial face masks, all of them can be used with EcoSpun resin. Today, the sophisticated boneyard machines and systems that manage municipal waste represent light years of progress from the wasteful and disastrous practices of the past. Instead of being a danger to the environment, more and more of our garbage is being recovered as valuable resources, including fiber, plastics, glass, metals, even energy. When you recycle, you've only accomplished one leg of the triad. You need to look for products that contain post-consumer material so that we're able to close the loop. As technologies for both using and recycling the world's resources continue to evolve, the consumer remains one of the most important players in closing the loop that moves the mountain of daily garbage between our homes and the boneyard.